Here we go, end of year list number two. Last year, these end of year song lists dropped about two weeks apart, and this year, it's one week apart, so we're improving. I'm, I'm improving, I'm getting there. How many of my recent intro jokes have been about my poor upload schedule? I need to find something else to talk about. In case you didn't know already, my end of year list videos started last week with my 10 best hit rap songs of 2020 video. And now, in this one, it's time to take a look at the other, ah, uglier side of things. The 10 worst hit rap songs of 2020. As always, for songs to be considered, they need to have charted on the Hot 100, and I need to consider them to be at least fairly ass. Now that we've got that out of the way, we might as well get into me ranting about music for around 20 minutes. This is CDTV Productions, and let's get into my personal worst hit rap songs of 2020. Yep, in my slime tea. In his prime Travis Scott and Young Thug. These are two artists who have made quite a few great songs together previously, so it's so frustrating to hear them sound like they're barely even trying on a track in 2020. The chorus from Travis Scott on here is so low energy that it doesn't even sound like a chorus. It sounds like a reference hook that you'll come back to later and add more of a punch to it, some more energy to it, but that's not what we get. Yep, in my white tea. Yeah, call up hype Williams for the hype, please. <laughs> yeah, M-O-Y-T. Yeah, call up hype Williams for the hype, please. He sounds like the studio is the last place he wants to be. And it doesn't look like that from the clips I'm playing you right now. In those clips, it looks like he's having fun in the studio. It looks like there's a lot of energy. Where was that in the song? And it's the same with his first verse, which is pretty much just a continuation of the flow and delivery from his lethargic chorus, with M.I.A. and Young Thug randomly dropping in during his verse in a way that sounds really messy and unorganized. As for Young Thug, he came through with a surprisingly disappointing verse, not really taking his flows or deliveries anywhere interesting like he usually does, and M.I.A., while not the worst part of the song in my opinion, definitely does not make the song slap any harder either. Honestly, the two things franchise has going for it is the instrumental, and the remix, because Future actually put in an impressive performance over this beat. Travis's last verse was decent as well, but it was not enough to save Franchise from being a much less than stellar single. They thought it was over till I pulled up in the drop. Let's go. The light, hit the gas. Yeah, yeah. She like it when I hit her with my chain on it. So the baby actually switched up the flow on here. And we all found out why he shouldn't. Blame it on Baby saw the baby shifting a little bit more towards a melodic sound on certain tracks. And don't get me wrong, with some of them, such as Find My Way, it worked. But with the majority of them, and in this specific case, with Drop, it sounded horrendous. When the baby is trying to hit those higher or more intense notes, the autotune just does not mesh with him in a very good way at all. The singing on this one just sounds so awkward. When you ain't want that, uh, passing out the loans that I don't want back. Uh, Every time you cross the line, I let you go back. It's proof that autotune will not automatically make you sound good, regardless of what your input is. And interestingly, I feel pretty much the same way about the singing of the feature on here. A Boogie, aka Metro Boom Make It Boom, Metro Boom Make, make it, it Boom. Why did he have to say that so sensually? When he's melodic in a more calm, subtle way, it can actually sound pretty good, but when he's trying to hit those higher, more powerful notes, it just sounds really weird and like it misses the mark to me. He switches between the two on this verse, so it's pretty hit or miss and doesn't really do anything for the song, and definitely doesn't make up for the DaBaby performance. Yeah. I swear he's not me. If he ain't with this then he not with me. Like I said, Melodic Baby can work very occasionally, but he needs to stick much more in the direction of Find My Way than the strange, almost funny vocals of Drop. I done fell in love with buying jeans. Hate I found in love for sipping lean. Girl got faster than a demon. Who's she wagging with no key? How? 
did this song chart. My turn starts off with two fairly nice tracks, Get Ugly and Heating Up, but then How comes on and puts a dead stop to the momentum built up by them. I don't even know why it's on there. Now, there were a lot of songs that I wasn't crazy about on my turn. I didn't like the album. But How stands ahead of every single one of them as the laziest sounding track. Hearing Baby low energy murmuring for three minutes over a beat almost entirely composed of 808s, hi-hats and claps but no strong melody to it is so uninteresting that words can't even describe it. All I know is murder beats. I got rich and understand my next three cars gonna be at least. I ain't never losing sleep. That's pretty much what the whole song sounds like. Three minutes of that. It sounds like the beat wasn't even finished. It sounds like they accidentally uploaded the song to streaming services with a couple of the instrumental layers muted. It sounds like not a single person involved with this song gave a shit. Baby just does not have the vocal presence to work with a very stripped down beat. And that is where How completely fails and becomes a difficult track to sit through. Trap money, hey. Snow bunnies, hey. Trap money, hey. Push start. Harlem Shake. AKA A, the musical. Once again, we have another collaboration featuring Young Thug that just didn't live up to my expectations because Harlem Shake is so boring. I usually really like Thug and Future together, but this might just be the worst song that they've done with each other. It's another case of the artists on the song sounding like they do not give a shit and putting it out just because they can. The entire song is Thug and Future rapping completely random, mostly unconnected lines, and dropping an A ad lib at the end of each line, with thugs being particularly lazy with the writing. He's just saying random words or sentences. It doesn't mean anything and he doesn't even sound like he's having fun rapping on here so there's nothing to enjoy about it. It's completely devoid of energy and that is the last thing I expect from these two working together. Where's that three energy? Where's that D4L energy? That's what I need. Side note, if you haven't listened to three, I would 100% recommend that because that's one of my favorite Thug and Future songs and I barely see anyone talking about that one. I don't have much else to say about it. Just a painfully forgettable collaboration from a duo that I usually enjoy. Surf, 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 pop up, hurt, pop up, smurf. If Lil Baby was boring on how, of course, we could count on his friend Gunna Wanna the Daughter Lover to come through with an even more boring hit. Now, Wanna the album was actually a somewhat enjoyable album for me. I didn't love it, but it's the most I've enjoyed any Gunna album so far and the production is pretty great throughout. However, this title track, pure graveyard energy. And not in the way that it's got some cool, dark, spooky vibe to it, it's just fucking dead. He used the speed it up formula for the chorus and the second verse on here, but he dropped the syllables per breath from three to two. And that is just as dull as it sounds. Money, huddle, huddle, gotta, cutter, huddle, ladder, orders, huddle, dollars. Gunna already runs the risk of being boring with his very laid back voice and delivery, so when his flow is so split up like that, it's in essence a musical sedative. The beat is much less interesting here than the one on Speed It Up, with this one being even more low key, so that's not great either. Although the instrumental still is probably the best part of the song. I also have no clue what he meant by the line Papa Perk, Papa Smurf. But that's beside the point, the lyrics aren't the main focus here. Gunna is an artist you listen to for the sound and the vibe that he gives off. And for me personally, both those things are severely lacking on this track. You guys already knew this was coming. 6 9 dropped some of the worst music to be released in 2020, so it only makes sense that he's included on a worst songs of 2020 list. And maybe he's gonna be on the worst albums list too. Subscribe and turn on notifications to find out. This song went number one. To whoever allowed this to happen, and whichever particular group of stands, who I won't name because they are known to be pretty ruthless, are responsible, 
Rethink your actions. First things first, that goddamn chorus. What is going on? I've brought up hooks a lot in this video, but that's because they're things that are very important to hit songs. So when they sound like this, I'm gonna mention that it's ass, ass, ass. Singing 6 9 is just an awful thing to listen to. And that's what the majority of this song is from him until he abruptly switches up to some shout rapping halfway through his verse. Nicki Minaj is fine on here, I guess, but there's just little things that bug me about her verse. The start where she disappears into the void for no particular reason. Even your man know Nicki's doing better. Real wet, I said slurp it like it's pasta, just sounds disgusting. Her throwing a jab at Usher, of all people, is really funny to me. I, I don't even know why they're beefing. Like I said, her verse is fine, but it doesn't save the song from that mind-numbing 6 9 hook and just the general air of trash that this song has surrounding it. We don't get no fuck, no. We don't get no fuck, fuck shit. I didn't public, public, and we run shit. What shit? Well... At least the title of this song is accurate. Everyone on this track truly sounded like they wholeheartedly gave no fucks about the song. When I saw another track announced with Migos, Thugger, and Travis on it, I got hyped. I naively thought that maybe we would get something on the level of culture era Migos with the features looking so promising. Boy, was this the opposite. The Migos formula just isn't working in 2020. The repetitive Quavo hooks have lost their spark now, with the one on this song sounding more dry than anything. Take Off, who can usually be counted on to come through with the strongest verse on Amigos song, doesn't even sound like himself on here with the weird, melodic sound he tries to go for. Offset has the most enjoyable verse, but his vocals are mixed pretty strangely. I don't know why his voice sounds so unclear and kind of like it's clipping compared to everyone else. We don't get too far. Two choppers hanging out the road, road truck. Pop up. Go play with your kid cause I up. Uh, she broke, so why would I cook? He sounded like he was standing like right up in front of the microphone when he was recording that. We don't get two fucks, choppers hanging out the Rolls Royce truck. The fact that they all share one verse and just let the features do the rest of the work shows the amount of care put into this song. And speaking of the features, Young Thug unfortunately came through with his third disappointing guest verse of the year on this one. Just by reading it, you can tell this was phoned in. And Travis was fine, I guess, but nothing that really sounds that good. He just sounds like he's off in his own world on this track. All in all, it's just a collection of really underwhelming performances from artists who made some of the most enjoyable collaborations in the trap genre just a few years ago. I'll stick with Kelly Price, Oh My This Side, and Pick Up The Phone, over this uninspired track and franchise any day. The baby voice is a curse against humanity that should have never went this far. Now, I've never liked it, but at least it was more bearable in its earlier stages, like flatbed freestyle. Stack it like right on the shelf. Your big love for me, yeah. But as it progressed, Carty just got more and more extreme with it, to the point that we got to at me, and he went from baby voice to fetus still in the womb voice. And it sounds dreadful. It's annoying because he got such a great beat from Nico Baby, Desk Hop, and Jetson made with all those different synth sounds and melodies that bounce back and forth off of each other. It's a beat that makes me happy at first whenever I hear it. But that smile quickly fades when still a sperm cell in the ball sack voice Carty starts unintelligibly rapping over it. It's such an unfortunate use of a great instrumental. On top of that, the song feels like it barely has any type of structure. It does have one, it's a simple verse-chorus-verse-chorus chorus pattern, but with the way that Carty raps, there's not much of a difference vocally between the verses, 
and the chorus in a way that it all sort of blends together and just becomes one big massive mesh of a song as it goes on. Nothing really changes as the track goes on. Thankfully though, this song would not end up finding its way onto Carti's most recently released album Whole Lotta Red, an album which was spared from this level of extreme baby voice on the best tracks, and an album which, very surprisingly, I actually liked. If you want to hear more about that, you can go listen to episode 3 of the Minds Collide podcast with me and Blackie Speaks. We had a great conversation about this project. Thank God more tracks like this did not find their way on there. It's been months since this track dropped, and I'm still perplexed as to why it exists. If you know me, you'll know that Uzi's music has drastically grown on me over time, but that does mean with his bad songs, I dislike them even more because I go into them expecting to enjoy them now. And as far as Lil Uzi music goes, Sasuke is bottom tier. As you can tell from what I said about Carti just moments ago, I do not like the baby voice within rap music. And for some reason, on this song, Uzi decides to do his own version of a carty like baby voice, and it is disgustingly bad. I'm the only one in the army. Only one. Yeah. There were rumours when this dropped that Uzi did the baby voice on this song to mock Carti in a way, or imitate his style. But that does not make this any better. Uzi did what Carti does, but just worse, surpassing at me in whackness levels. You can't diss someone by dropping a whole lot of ass. The baby voice is the worst part of it by far, but also the hook is dead, the first verse isn't that good, Uzi's voice sounds kinda weird on here even when he's rapping more normally. Overall, it's just another fairly nice beat that was completely butchered by the rapping over it. There's also that part where he sounds like he's talking about wanting to put his dick inside a British automobile on repeat. But it turns out he's saying frog eye Bentley, not fuck a Bentley. Confusion could have been avoided if he didn't deliver the lyrics in that strange, strange way that he did. Luckily, Uzi didn't drop that many bad tracks in 2020, but when he did, he really made them count because Sasuke was bad enough to make it to number two on this worst songs of the year list. I'ma show you how to get it, it go right foot up, left foot slide, left foot up, right foot up. This shit, man. This is the most manufactured, commercialized, watered down, lukewarm bathwater, plain slice of bread, kids bop, crafted in the TikTok song factory head ass track that has ever been made. Originally, I was gonna pick Pain 1993 for this spot because that song is not good to me either, but then. I re-listened to Tusi Slide and realised not much is worse than four dry ass minutes of Drake pandering to TikTok over a flimsy, lightweight instrumental that packs about as much punch as someone holding in their dying breath. Don't you wanna dance with me? No, I could dance like Michael Jack. I mean the song has such a dead beat, I'm surprised that it doesn't have a son called Adonis. Yes, I did it. I redeemed myself for when I got that joke wrong two years ago. A song called Added On. So we can, we can stop bullying me for that now. Then over that weak beat, Drake has absolutely zero energy in his vocals and that is a horrible combination. The song is lifeless. What's even worse is that this is supposed to be a song with a dance attached to it, but the explanation of the dance within the lyrics is so fucking lazy. Drake did not even care with this one. Right foot up, left foot slide. Left foot up, right foot slide. Basically I'm saying either way we bout to slide. <laughs> so corny and awkward. The hook is just pandering so hard to TikTok without even trying to hide it, and it kind of makes me want to throw up. And what makes it embarrassingly hilarious is how he tries to talk about drive-bys and killing his ops on a song like this, 
tying the Tussie slide into being a phrase that represents street shit. Nah, nah, nah. It is impossible to sound threatening on a song that you made to blow up on an app primarily used by people in their early teens. This song manages to be both flavorless and sickening at the same time. The intentions of this song are so clear, and that is a very bad thing, considering how awful and just flat out dull the whole track sounds. It being targeted at a specific app is not my only issue. This song isn't at number one just because it panders to TikTok. That only stands out to me so much because it's such a dull and boring and low energy track. When something sounds this inorganic, it is just not fun to listen to. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why Tussie Slide is, in my opinion, the worst hit rap song of 2020. Well guys, that is gonna be it for the video today. Thank you so much for watching and I would appreciate you leaving a like if you enjoyed the video as always and subscribing to see more content similar to this. Following this one, I'm gonna be putting out the 10 best rap albums of 2020 and the 10 worst albums of 2020. And then once that's done, I can get around to the other videos that people are also expecting me to put out soon. But yeah, that's all I've got to say for today, guys. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you all in the next end of your list video. And this is CDTV Productions. Signing out.